happy to announce that I've finally finished reading Le Miserable, which is upside down by Victor Hugo. It took me a bit over a month to get through the thousand pages of my humongous edition. It was so heavy to carry around, but boy was this a satisfying read. But I'm getting ahead of myself. I wanted to tell you a tiny bit about the plot first. This story is set in France in the 1800s and its title, Le Miserable, The Miserable, is very suggesting as to the focal point of this novel, which are the poor and the wretched. And who were the pariahs of 19th century society? Those unredeemable individuals who were considered to be below the lowest social class. The convicts. And it is an ex-convict, uh, excuse my horrible pronunciation, Jean Valjean, uh, whom we follow through his struggle for freedom, for survival, and for redemption. That's the basic plotline onto which Hugo weaves his masterpiece by adding a plethora of stunning, three-dimensional, evolving characters, each with its own destiny and its own background story. Boy, does that author have some serious skills when it comes to character building. These characters were probably the thing I enjoyed the most in Le Miserable, and even the ones I hated, I enjoyed reading about because they were so crashfully portrayed. Don't even get me started on how much I adored, loved Jean Valjean, the main character. I haven't read nearly as much as I should have before starting to make such assertions, but Jean Valjean might just be one of the best protagonists in the history of literature. I was so engrossed in the evolution of this character that every single page that had his name on it had the 200% of my attention. I wanted to know everything about him and I was so anxious to get to the end of this because I wanted to know what happened to him. Other brilliant characters were police officer Javert and the leader of Les Amis de l'ABC, uh, Anjora. Goodness, I loved Anjora. I'm not even gonna go there because he's such an amazing character. If you've read this, you know, and if you haven't, then one more reason for you to read this is to fall in love with Anjara. An amazing thing about the characters Hugo built for Le Mans, um, is the fact that through their flaws, he kind of gets your attention and points it towards certain issues that he wants you to think about. For example, the character of Javert makes you ponder about the difference between justice and legality, between what's right and what's legal. Another thing I was positively impressed with was the historical setting. I'm pretty sure Hugo was born in 1802, so he was a first-hand witness to many of the events he describes in this novel. Also, he has a lot of knowledge about uh, how Paris was made in the 19th century and uh, historical events that he didn't witness as well. He also wants to share that knowledge with you. So you find at a certain point 50 pages describing Waterloo and the Battle of Waterloo and uh, 20 pages about the history of Paris sewers. So there was so much info at certain points that I really wish that Hugo would have told me a tiny bit less. Revolution, redemption, and social commentary were not enough for Hugo, so he also put romance in this bad boy over here. He went as far as to insert a love triangle in this. And while that love story between Marius and Cosette might have turned all gooey on the inside 19th century mademoiselles, it was too much for me. It was too fluffy. No, just no. It was a complete turn off for me. It was the thing I had most problems with in this novel. And just no, no. Every page that had Marius and Cosette thinking about each other or them together in it, even worse, just caused me huge problems. I really didn't want to read the, those pages. Something quite important I haven't mentioned yet is the role God plays in this novel, which is pretty prominent. He gets mentioned a lot, especially at the beginning, and I have to say that is something I very much liked. Um, I feel like this is a time in my life when I really needed uh, a little push 
to think about my relationship with God and Hugo gave me that push so I'm very glad for that. Finally, the big question. Should you read this? My answer is, I don't know. Once again, I loved this so much. I was completely sold on it. So much so that even now, four days after having finished reading it, I am still so engrossed in it. So many thoughts about it are still floating in my head that I haven't been able to pick up another book. And books like that, those that make you love them so much you just can't let them go are the best ones in my opinion. But I have to say that this is definitely not a novel for everyone. It's not something you can just breeze through and it's filled with mini history lessons which might really be awesome for some people but it also may be a turn off for others. So what I'm saying is don't force yourself to read this. But if it is calling to you, don't let the fact that Goodreads tell you it's 1,400 pages long uh, intimidate you because this is going to be such a satisfying, enriching reading experience. Have you read La Miserable? Do you intend to read it? Or if you have read it, what did you think about it? Didn't you love Anjara and Jean Valjean? Tell me in the comments below and feel free to ask any questions about this fantastic novel. That was my review for Les Miserables by Victor Hugo. I hope you enjoyed it, although I'm pretty sure I did not do this timeless classic any justice. I'm signing off. Uh, a bientôt!